We had a uh, really good meeting. And to answer your direct question, we have a deal. And uh, I think it's really important. We've all agreed that uh, none of us got what we all that we wanted. I clearly didn't get all I wanted. They gave more than I think maybe they were inclined to give in the first place. But this reminds me of the days we used to get an awful lot done up in the United States Congress. We actually worked with them. We had bipartisan deals. The bipartisan deals mean to compromise. One of the things that I've, I've made clear, I've signed on, and I'm going to let them give you the detail because, and you can ask them, and I'm, I will, I will talk to you all later, next hour or two, but I promise you I'm not going away. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, we agreed on infrastructure, we made serious compromises on both ends. Uh, there is, uh, and they'll, they'll give you the numbers. But we did not, they did not, and I understand their position, Republicans and this group did not want to go along with any of my family plan issues, the child care tax credits, the human infrastructure that I talk about. And uh, that we'll see what happens in a reconciliation bill in the budget process. If that, uh, if we you get some compromise there, and if we can't, see if I can attract all the Democrats to a position that is there. But we're gonna, they're gonna move in a dual track. And, uh, and that's all I have to say. But I, I wanna thank each and every one of them. It's been, you know, a lot of us go back a long way where we're used to doing one thing, give each other our word, and that's the end. That was President Joe Biden alongside some of the most loathsome people in the country announcing that they finally struck a deal on infrastructure. And that deal is so laughably bad that I have to think they've got to be trolling us. Like, it's laughable. It's very obviously an attempt for them to get something accomplished that they could take back to their constituents and say, look, we got this done. When in actuality, all of the really good things about this were taken out of it. And especially the provisions that lead to us investing in clean, green, renewable technology, which is really, really important for infrastructure. There was a moment in that video where it, it really, I don't know if I'm looking too much into this, but I really, I hate all of these folks. So you can just tell that I'm biased. But uh, Biden talked about how, you know, we, we removed the early childhood tax credit and mansion and cinema. They're just sitting there nodding along. Yep. We didn't agree with that. As if they're like proud that they got that removed. You should be embarrassed that that was taken out because that actually does help families. It has a concrete impact on the lives of millions of families. And you got that taken out and now you're celebrating that effectively. It's embarrassing. But there is a tiny, tiny little bit of hope to be left when it comes to whether or not there's going to be any progressive policy concessions that come out of this. I'm not necessarily too optimistic. In fact, I'm pretty skeptical. Having said that, though, uh, we're going to read a Common Dreams article that kind of breaks down what's in that bill and what could be done to possibly pass some progressive policy since they all got taken out of the infrastructure compromise. So as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams explains, President Joe Biden announced in front of the White House on Thursday that he reached a deal with a group of Republican and Democratic senators on an infrastructure framework that includes hundreds of billions of dollars in spending on roads, bridges, water systems, and broadband over the next half decade. The package, which Biden characterized Characterized as the product of serious compromises on both ends will be far smaller than the president's original American jobs plan, which proposed roughly $2.2 trillion in new infrastructure spending over the next eight years. According to a fact sheet released by the White House, the bipartisan deal includes $579 billion in new infrastructure spending over the course of five years, with $309 billion going to transportation and $109 billion earmarked for roads, bridges, and other major projects. Speaking to reporters outside the the White House, Senator Rob Portman of Ohio, who led the bipartisan talks along with Senator Kirsten Sinema, said the blueprint will not include any new taxes. Instead, the framework proposes financing the plan by repurposing unspent unemployment insurance funds, reducing the IRS tax gap, and utilizing public-private partnerships and asset recycling. Progressive advocacy groups have warned that the latter two pay-fors would hand public infrastructure over to corporations and Wall Street investors. 
And that's why they wanted it. Shortly before Biden announced the bipartisan agreement, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told reporters that the lower chamber will not vote on bipartisan infrastructure legislation until the Senate also passes a reconciliation bill containing Democratic priorities that were excluded from the compromise measure, including spending on social safety net programs, green energy, and more. Senator Bernie Sanders, chair of the Senate Budget Committee, and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer are currently working on a $6 trillion reconciliation package that also includes a Medicare expansion and other progressive agenda items. Okay, so that last paragraph is particularly of interest to me. So when it comes to Nancy Pelosi's stipulation that we're not going to vote on this infrastructure compromise in the House until we vote on a reconciliation bill or until the Senate votes on a reconciliation bill, um, that is something that is important because that's one way that they can use the uh, budget resolution to pass progressive priorities using budget reconciliation. Uh, and it seems as if Joe Biden is on board with that. He agrees that both bills basically have to be passed simultaneously. I expect that in the, the coming months this summer, before the, count, the, the fiscal year is over, that we will have voted on this bill, as well, the infrastructure bill, as well as voted on the budget rec uh, uh, resolution. And that's when they'll, but if only one comes to me, I'm not, if, if this is the only thing that comes to me, I'm not signing it. It's in tandem. Okay, so a lot is still up in the air. We don't necessarily know what is and isn't going to happen. But in the event, if you know, they, they support this infrastructure proposal, the bipartisan compromise that it removes provisions that invest in clean, green, renewable technology, wind, solar, hydro. But they have spending for this in, you know, the uh, budget resolution passed using uh, reconciliation with 50 uh, votes plus one. Is that a victory for the left? Um, it depends. Like, we have to see the details. I don't think anyone at this point can say that anyone is victorious at this point or is going to be victorious at this point in time because the details are still being hashed out when it comes to the budget resolution. So we have to basically wait and see. But if I'm a, a lawmaker, this is what I'm I'm saying. Uh, in the event that budget resolution does not contain a lot of concessions, especially investments in clean, green, renewable technology, like a Green New Deal light, I'm not voting for it. And progressives have got to stand firm here. And for the most part, to their credit, they have, they've said very clearly, no climate, no deal. And Mondaire Jones retweeted himself with a meme that suggests that they're not going to budge. If they don't get concessions when it comes to climate change and addressing climate change, then they're not going to support this infrastructure bill. Now, if Biden ends up weakening what's offered in the budget resolution and cites some bullshit excuse about the, you know, Senate parliamentarian or Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema, I think that progressives cannot agree to support the infrastructure plan because basically everything that you wanted in that infrastructure package got removed. So if you don't get some really strong concrete concessions in the budget res resolution, then um, don't support it. Threaten to torpedo it if you have to. Stay strong. No climate. No deal. You have to draw a line in the sand. And if any money is going to go towards infrastructure, but we're not simultaneously trying to do even the most minimal amount that we can to mitigate climate change, you've got to tank it. Make them get back to the drawing board. And, and look, this they're going to get blamed in the media if this happens. Like, we're talking hypotheticals at this point. But if progressives have to end up tanking this, yes, the media is going to demonize them. The moderates will look victorious. But they've got to fight. They've got to stand strong. Because if they get rolled here, you know, it's it's not going to bode well for the future of uh, their agenda. If they can't use, uh, you know, this opportunity right now. So, you know, that... What is in that that budget reconciliation package, uh, the, the budget resolution that they're going to be voting on with 51 votes? That is going to be so important. Keep an eye out for that. I do trust Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is trying to basically expand Medicare to more people. He's trying to work in student debt cancellation. So Bernie Sanders is going to try to make it as progressive as possible. So it, it depends on like what gets left out of what Bernie is proposing, because I'm assuming there's going to be some compromises there as well. And I put compromise in quotes because it's going to be more demands made from corporate Democrats because still, even though they're using budget reconciliation, they need 50 votes and Kamala Harris will be the tiebreaker. But 
If it gets a little bit too progressive, then Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, they might say, well, you know what? I don't like that there's an increase to the minimum wage. I don't like that there is an expansion for Medicare in there, so let's take it out. And so if that's the case, if you water down that as well after the moderates got basically a watered down infrastructure package that's laughably weak and woefully inadequate, then progressives have got to sink this bill. They've got to throw their weight around because this doesn't pass without the moderates, but it also doesn't pass without progressives. So now is the time to make demands and you know we'll we'll have to leave that there i'll reserve judgment for what's in the package uh but i really really hope that progressives have formed a cohesive plan and they're going to be united here and i i hope that they you know when they said no climate no deal they meant it because now is the time where the spotlight's on them and you know if they let us down here you know this is going to hurt the movement overall so i really really hope that they fight and so far they haven't showed any signs that they're going to be backing down. So I, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and toes that the left doesn't get screwed. Having said that, though, I'm skeptical. I'm going to, uh, you know, hope for the best, but brace for the absolute worst because this is American politics. And that's usually the way that things go. We don't get too many victories on the left. So, look, it's a game of wait and see for those of us on the outside.